Welcome back. We're going to look now at section 1.5 of the book, Solution Sets of Linear Systems. First, an idea here, a definition, homogeneous. A system of linear equations is homogeneous if it can be written in the form ax equals 0, where m is your matrix, and 0 is the 0 vector. Now, take a look at this and note that there is always a solution to this. If you set the x equal to 0, so it's the 0 vector, there is always going to be a solution. That's called a trivial solution. Okay. It's so easy, it's trivial. Some, something multiplied by 0 equals 0. Anything else, any non-zero solution, is called a non-trivial solution. Now here's an important point. Any homogeneous equation has a non-trivial solution if and only if the, the equation, or that should be the solution set, has at least one free variable. So remember we talked about free variables. When you take your, your system of linear equations, put it in an augmented matrix, and row reduce it, you can get something called a free variable. That free variable means that there is a non-trivial solution to ax equals zero. If you do not have a trivial a free variable, then the only solution is the trivial solution. There's no solutions other than the zero. Now, just think about what why that is. Remember, when we have a when we have no free variable, but we have a solution, what does it mean? It means that we have a single solution. Well, in this case, for homogeneous, a single solution means the zero vector. We already know it's, it's a solution. No free variable means there is only one solution and it is the zero variable. Well, this is why free variables and non-trivial solutions go together. So here's an example. This is, let's say that we have a system of linear equations. We go through it and we row reduce and we end up with this augmented matrix. So here is an augmented matrix after row reduction. And this is representing a homogeneous solution. So the homogeneous solution means that we have it's augmented, so it equals zero. Our last column is all zeros. We've row reduced, we've gotten this. What do we have? Let's describe this solutions, solution set. So we've done this, we did this before a couple of lectures back. We're gonna rewrite these equations, one for each row. So what do we have? We have, uh, we put it down below here, x1, plus 4x3 plus 2x5 equals 0. And noting that we have five variables, five columns, so it gives us five variables. Our second one says x2 minus 5x3 minus 3x5 equals 0. Our third one says we have x4 minus 4x5 equals 0. Note that we have, these are our leading entries, so our pivot points, or our pivot entries. That means that x3 is free, and x5 is free. The others are basic variables. So now we have this. Let's take every one of our variables and write it down as an equation. And note that when we do this, we are going to end up with our basic variables equal some function of our free variables, which is what we've, we've seen before. So we take this and rewrite everything. And we're gonna write an equation for every variable, whether it's free or not. So x1 equals, well, we have x1 in that first. That is equal to negative four x3 minus 2x5. 
Our second equation gives us x2 equals negative 5x3 plus 3x5. Our x3, this is a free one, so I'm going to write this as x3 equals x3. Okay. For the free variables, we, I'm going to always write them like this. Our, last, our fourth one, x4, is equal to 4x5. And then we have x5 equal to x5. So I've written it now with every one of my equations, or every one of my variables, equal to free variables. Notice the basic variables are not on the right-hand side. It's only the free variables. Now I'm going to describe this solution set in terms of vectors. I am looking for x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. My free variables are x3 and x5. So I am going to note that every solution to this can be written as x3 plus something plus x5 times something. And if you look at the equations, only x3 and x5, only the free variables are on the right-hand side. So I, those are the only important variables. So now let's take the, the coefficients of x3 out. We get the negative 4, negative 5, 1, 0, and 0. Take out the x5s, I get negative 2, 3, 0, 4, and 1. So what have I done here? I have described every possible solution in terms of my free variables. We saw before that if you take the free variables, you can give them whatever number you want. From that number, you can calculate your basic variables and it gives you a solution. So a free variable means an infinite number of solutions. Well, what have I done here? I've written it down in terms of my free variables and a vector. So every possible solution is the free variable times a vector plus the next free variable times a vector plus the next free variable times a vector and so on. This is a way of writing down all of your solution sets. What does this mean? Well, this was a homogeneous system. Does it have a non-trivial solution? Yes, it does because I can stick whatever number I want in for x3 and x5 and give a non-trivial solution. In, that, in fact, I have infinitely many solutions to it. Describe the solution set, there it is. That is in something called parametric form. So take this, you're gonna look and see this is very similar write this in parametric vector form. This time it's not homogeneous because my augmented column is not all zeros. So what do I get from my parametric vector form here? Well, let's do the same thing. Let's rewrite these equations. I get x1 plus 4x3 plus 2x5 equals 0. Next one I get x2 minus 5x3 minus 3x5 equals 2. I get x4 uh, minus 4x5 equals 4. And I have that x3 is free and x5 is free. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to rewrite every variable in terms of the free variables using that equation, using those equations. So I get negative 4x3 minus 2x5. I get 5x3 plus 3x5. Sorry, I'm going to write that slightly differently. I have the 2 on here. So it's 2 plus 5x3 minus 3x5. x3 is free, so just x3 equals x3. x4 is equal to 
plus 4x5, and x5 is equal to x5. There's all my variables written in terms of free variables. So now let's write this in parametric form. But you see the difference now is that I have some numbers in there without variables. So that means I have to take that into account. What do I get? First, my column of variables equals. Well, now I'm going to start out with my constants. What are the constants that I have in here? 0, 2, 0, 4, and 0. That's the constants in each of the equations. Plus x3 times something, plus x5 times something. What are my x3 values? Minus 4, 5, 1, 0, and 0. What are the x5 values as I go down? Minus 2, minus 3, 0, 4, and 1. And there is my parametric vector form for a non-homogeneous solution set. Again, this is telling me that I have infinitely many solutions. I could set my x3 and x5 to whatever I want, and I'm going to keep getting different solutions depending on what I set them to. But now note that these were, these two examples were very similar. The only thing different was one was homogeneous, one wasn't. One, one had zeros for the augmented, one had non-zeros for the augmented column. Look at what the solutions were. Here was the solution for the augmented, or for the homogeneous. Here was the solution for the non-homogeneous. This part is the exact same. This is telling us something that when we have non-homogeneous system, our solution is going to be a vector plus something which is the exact copy of the solution of the homogeneous system. Which gives us a theorem. If we have an equation that's consistent for some given b, in other words, it does have a solution, let p be a solution, any solution, then all of the solutions is the set of vectors of this form where this is one solution and that is the solution to the homogeneous equation. So in other words, if a homogeneous equation or the homogeneous equation is very closely related to the non-homogeneous, AX equals B, the solution set to that is very similar to AX equals zero. The only difference being you're adding in some vector that's a solution if the A solution exists. So non-homogeneous and homogeneous are very closely related.